have to have an emphatic, in the moment, exchange with the people that want our music. What matters is that we know that that we've been able to allow our audience to find themselves in what we do and that's our validation that people kind of go not just that's me but that this is this pumpkin song this band this man this group this collective is where I am this is where the one of the places the only places that I can feel that I'm complete so what then happens is whip pan ten years ahead they don't need that machinery anymore but they still value it as a phase in their life which was precious in an almost supernumerary manner it's enormously valuable to them it was their epiphany their unfolding their moment of realization and they don't want the smashing pumpkins to be anything else other than they were and they don't care about the artistic collective or the artistic needs of the musicians the best artists of, of the pop genre since the early 50s have been artists that have allowed us to interpolate ourselves into their work into their character their personality their songs or if they're a band into their collective so we have as fans this feeling of of wanting what worked for us once to remain like an archive like a museum it's got nothing to do with what we think it's about you know and we're dreadfully hurt by it as artists when our fans say you know we just don't want you to change we don't want you to do anything new we just want you to because they can find somebody else to deal with their troubles of the moment they can find some you, you dealt with their 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 dodgy toe they'll find somebody you the, you're the good toe man let's go find somebody else to deal with the with with the hand it's as simple as that i think and it's very very difficult as an artist to handle that <laughs> in 1971 I had this project called Lifehouse. It was very, very far seen because a lot of the things that it spoke about then were meant to be almost science fiction ideas and it was, it was meant nothing more than a science fiction concept but one that you could read as a, as a cipher or a, a, a model for what was a mirror or, or some kind of shade for what was starting to happen in the rock business even back then. We in a Pink Floyd with their floating pigs and quadraphonic sound and you know everything was becoming changed in a way at the time by technology and Lifehouse was meant to be uh, uh, an opportunity for our audience to make a, a, a comment about that I'd written the text and I'd written some of the songs and I wanted to find out in a way how the audience would respond if you put them in a room and and you in a way what you did is you with the band and you you said to them you know what do you want us to play and and how do you want us to play it and and what's your name and where do you come from and do you like this and do you like that I mean taking not just exposing yourself to the man in the street before and after a concert but actually during the creative process and finding actually that that you know the ordinary man in the street is not going to like this they're a bunch of cunts they're a bunch of cunts you know they have no fucking idea what we do no idea these, these are people that have been through school and the creative process has been completely destroyed for them and the other thing is is that it's it was I felt that it was so upended so difficult because it was almost as though there was a hierarchy that I was fucking with as well which was that you know we were the band we were the reason why people showed up and then the first thing that we say is we're not the band you know you're the band well it's quite clear surely in the rock industry that the the only important component of a rock concert is the audience it's not just because they happen to have bought the tickets that's that's the illusion oh well of course they're important they're the people that pay for you assholes in the gold lame to stand up on the stage that's not the mechanic it's the fact that the gut the arseholes in the gold lame on the stage are saying to the audience we're only we can only do what we do if you allow us to do it you know and the moment that you say leave the stage we'll leave and there weren't very many people at the young Vic in 1971 because people walked in 
thought, this isn't a rock concert, I'm going home. You know, we were there from eight in the morning till midnight every day for six days, you know. Most people stopped coming. Well, what you've created in a way is a form of installation, an installation of process. And some people will, will love being a part of that and some people wouldn't. I mean, I don't think that the guys in the band, in my band, The Who, when I'd just come out of school, the word installation was already established. This is 1961. But I believe it, and like people like Gustav Metzger and Yoko Ono was, you know, young and in London, and was using the word installation. This is very, very early, and uh, um, and I, me and my friend Richard Barnes, who 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 was very important in the Who's um, thinking process in the early days, again is known as a biographer, but was actually a. A real, he thought up the name The Who and, and um, anyway he, he and I used to sit around and, and we used to talk about The Who as an installation and we wrote a manifesto which has sadly got lost but it was that the band would last for about three months and, and I started to use this term that we would chop away at our own legs you know in public. And, and in a way, the punk manifesto that followed in, 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 in the early 70s was very, very similar and it was based on the same ideas that what was wrong with music at the time was that it didn't allow the audience uh, to function through the artistic presence, through the process. But what you're doing is a similar thing. It's an installation. It's taking the artistic process and... Um, and of course you're going to get polarisation because there are some in the audience because some of the people are going to be happy to be part of the installation and some aren't. And guess what? The ones that aren't are going to be far less disappointed when it's over because the ones that are a part of the, 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 the process, the installation, are going to be really sad when it's finished, just as we are when we finish an album. And in The Who, one of the great frustrations that I've had is, is that it's proved almost impossible to change um, because if you change too much it, it just doesn't work, it doesn't, it doesn't do what it did. A song like Barbara O'Reilly for example has, has taken on a life which, you know, that, that was a piece that came out of Lifehouse, it was a piece based on a bits of data based on an individual put into a, a musical database turned into a, a, almost like a painting, a graph paper, paper painting reproduced on an organ that I then cut into bits, put into a synthesizer, chopped up a one inch eight track piece of tape, put guitar and piano on the top, stuck on a meaningless lyric about driving across a field in a wasteland, oh we're all young and we're wasted, etc. We play it now, it starts to bubble away, and every time I think, you know, if only they could see me now, you know, in my little room, you know, fiddling. Because as soon as it starts to play, they go to this place, and it's got nothing to do with me. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. It belongs entirely to them. And when you say, you know, out here in the fields, it's their fields. It's not, you know, I wasn't thinking of their fields. I wasn't thinking of the sweeping cornfields of wherever it is. I was thinking of, you know, the kind of field down the road, you know, built, covered in wrecked cars and, and oil cans, you know. Uh, uh, I fight for my meals. It was meant to be about dereliction, not glory. And now that it's like it's, it's a hymn to this gathering. Uh, well, that's a, a good example of how you know, for me, that's finished, that process is over. I can never get back inside Barbara O'Reilly. There is art about art. There is holding up a mirror to process, and that's one of the things that you're doing. And I think that, you know, it can't fail to be intriguing and engaging. But what it can never do, what your film, what your documentary can never do, is be the event, it can only kind of record the event and the people that are involved in the event will either feel that it's done when they see the movie or they will feel that it's still going on and, or they will feel good about the fact that it's done or they will feel upset about the fact that it's done. Now the interesting thing about what we did at uh, the Young Vic in 1971 was is that um, it, 
it was meant to be a film. It was meant to be a film, and the whole thing was meant to be filmed. And my notion was that I was going to take music events and fly them into a fictional story which couched them and carried them so that you could see the process, you could see what I can now very eloquently put into a single, single sentence. It would be something, because it, in those days I didn't really understand what it was that Rock had done that was so different. And I realised that now, that looking back, and as I can now understand it, that it wasn't just rock that had done it. There had been a revolution of change in the function of art. And this is why the first people in rock, when they said, you know, I think I'm an artist, it was kind of, you pretentious fool, of course you're not an artist. You know, this is not art, this is something else. And in fact, art is probably the wrong word. We probably need a new word. But the function was very different to anything that had gone before. I can find no no model, you know, in every other field of entertainment, literature, music, every other form of creative life, sociology, politics, everything, you can go back to the Greeks and find the root. Not with this. This is weird what we do, you know, it's weird. Form that role at the same time. <laughs> I was just thinking as I was talking then you know the number of times that I've tried to do this kind of interview with somebody like Roger in the room who at some point will scoff and kind of go oh what a load of pretentious bollocks it's all just a laugh it's all just rock and roll you know we just have fun you know and in a way that's true too